Hi, everyone. It's Kathy Homeyer once again for nourishing your multidimensional body. And as the recording starts here through Be Live, and we uh, wait for some folks to say hello, um, I have up on the screen this is about traditional foods for new age health. Um, but while people kind of come on, it always gives me a chance to say hello from my Lake Clear Lodge and retreat. And um, we have a beautiful retreat center here. Uh, anyone who is looking to do wellness retreats, we have a beautiful spot, beautiful 25 acres. We have uh, beautiful grounds. Um, I guess I'll, I'll show this up while we're going to get into that later, but there we go. There's my retreat center where we've had uh, awesome, everything from harp retreats to uh, wellness retreats, yoga retreats, photography, a uh, whole nine yards in the retreat center. So anyone looking to host a retreat, this is um, a space that I hold in my way at Beautiful Foods. Uh, we did a awesome uh, September. Uh, this is, um, we're taping this in, in December here around the holidays and New Year. So happy New Year and happy holidays to everyone. Um, in September, we did a retreat and with uh, my friend, Dr. Karen Khan, who was an energy worker. And we had some awesome folks here and they literally went away supercharged. And that was her, um, her title of her retreat. And it was just awesome. Uh, Christy here on the Akashic Academy was here. I met Christy. I presented as well. And Dr. Karen, um, who you've seen on some of the shows here. So hello to everyone coming in. Just doing a little recap here of the space that I hold here in the Adirondacks near Lake Placid, New York. If you've been in upstate, not upstate, people think upstate, um, but we are really upstate. We're literally an hour from the Canadian border. So we are really upper New York state in the Adirondack Mountains near Lake Placid, New York. And I thought I'd do a recap. This is almost my... Um, my anniversary show, almost. So I was going to do, but I'm gonna to start to do a recap on traditional foods. Hi, Amber, hi, Sue, hello there. Uh, how is everybody doing? Um, kind of, we're taping this in uh, kind of holiday season, New Year's, kind of a really uh, eclectic time here. So what I'm gonna do, this is episode one of traditional foods for new age health. Now I've been, um, I don't call myself an expert at, at much <laughs> because I do a lot of things, but I've become familiar with traditional food preparations. And hi, Pam. And uh, yeah, we get a lot of people from New Jersey here, Pam, if it's New Jersey, I see NJ, I think it's New Jersey that you mean. We get a lot of folks from up here. And um, it, it's uh, the traditional foods that I started learning about um, were very interesting to me. I own and operate a restaurant. I am my own chef. Uh, and I really wanted to know and always been interested in nutrition. So really, I've taken kind of tradition. Let me see if I have any folks, any pictures up here. Well, this is the one that I really want to put up, right? Diet in our and the folks who are watching on the Akashic Academy here, and many of the folks who may see the YouTube and um you know, interested in nutrition. And typically in the past years, we've thought of nutrition as for the physical body, right? And now we know that diet really is not about what you eat, About it's about what you need at the time. Yeah, the Caribbean, a um, little bit different weather down there than up here right now. Uh, we've had snow and we've been doing sleigh rides. We've had rain and we really uh, thought we were gonna get nixed out over the holiday. And I did a little of, uh, you know, activations and different things that I might tell you about sometime. But I did some of the activations and we got snow. That rain turned into snow and no one else was able to do their sleigh rides. Um, but I did everything I had um, that I knew how to do activation wise and we got snow instead of rain. And we uh, had 70 people go out on sleigh rides last night and uh, just were ecstatic So and served people and it was amazing. So really, but so I do deal with physical nutrition, but also of course the title of my show is Nourishing Your Multidimensional Body. And that's what I have, you know, the more you go into nutrition, the more you realize things are energy, everything's energy. And I'm sure, like I said, you folks, on an Akashic Academy here, know all that I'm talking about and, you know, do it as well. Um, 
So now the new nutrition, we'll call it the new nutrition, um, is really about energy and energy medicine and even infusing foods, infusing waters. In fact, I have, um, you know, I have labels on my bottles. I infuse water, I infuse food. And before I forget to mention it too, I even infuse um, my cookbook. So it, you, you, it's all about energy, right? And everything is really kind of related in the field. So we did write a cookbook, actually, my husband and I, uh, finally, it's called Common Roots. And while we were doing this, what I did was it included really the precursor to some of these traditional food methods. This is, um, let me go into this background and then I'll back up too. This book is called Nourishing Traditions and um, comment if anybody, whether you're live or on the replay, if you have this book. It was the inspiration from a gentleman who actually traveled the world in the 40s and 50s, I'll try and give you a quick recap of this, but he traveled the world in the 40s and 50s looking for truly healthy populations and found some um, you know, who had access to good food and he really related it to physical food. He wrote this thick book on nutritional degeneration or physical degeneration and nutrition. Um, he lived with people for um, 10, you know, over 10 years and he lived with different people. So he has, what he, in a nutshell, what he came up with is 10 common denominators, or actually 11, sorry, 11 common denominators that he felt made people healthy throughout the world. And they were, no matter if they were in Alaska, you know, eating, you know, many fats um, in the Swiss Alps, eating milk and rye bread and cheese, whether they were in Africa with grains and even insects. Um, then he he actually found the 11 common denominators. So that's another show in itself. And I can actually, let me type in the website to this information. Uh, where's my, there's so many windows in here to try and find this. Let me type this website in for you. It's westonprice.org. So this is the really the traditional food. It's www.westonprice.org a price.org and I'll put that up. Some of you may know about Weston Price and the different foods. Uh, th this guy really wrote the book, literally wrote the book. Um, when he died, it was the start of processed food and his all his research was really swept under the rug. And when he died, he thought really our human population was going to annihilate ourselves because he was doing tests with cats and within three years they couldn't reproduce. Um, so he was really, I think, afraid for the human race when he when he died. But um, and he, when he died, his quote was, you teach, you teach, you teach. But years later, um, about 20 years later now, Sally Fallon wrote this book called uh, Nourishing Traditions. And it is really, if you're starting off with this, it's kind of overwhelming. And I did years ago, kind of by myself, finally found somebody who was uh, relating to these principles. And it's all about traditional food methods that now we are finding we need to get our bodies healthy again and to keep our bodies healthy. Things like probiotics. I mean, this is the book, the original one, why people know about probiotics, about gut health, about um, if you know about sourdough. And I do have a sourdough challenge where you can actually make um, not bread, if you don't want to make bread, but you can actually make, um, just changing the pics here, uh, you can actually make English muffins at the end with, I want to say, mostly gluten-free um, grain. And thank goodness they're now putting the titles up and articles up by more well-known um, agencies that say it is not about gluten, it is about the uh, grain and about how you prepare it. Really, that's it. It's not about gluten. We've been eating, not not directly, we've been eating bread for how many years, guys? You know how many years, eons, right? So it's really not the gluten. All of a sudden, it's a million different things, which I won't even get into now because I'll get on my soapbox about that. But Sally Fallon wrote, brought out Weston Price's information into this book. You can see how well it's used for me. And Sally was here. I think I actually have a picture of Sally down here. I um, actually was able to um, meet Sally. Let me see if I can find her pick. 
That's Weston Price. That's him. That's Sally. I was actually um, able to have Sally here at my place. We did a retreat. We talked all about Weston Price food principles and food preparation principles. Um, we had 100 people here at the retreat center. And then we had a week long retreat where we actually did all the processes of nutritional, um, the nutrition, nourishing traditions principles, the Dr. Weston Price principles, and um, did all sorts of things. So that's the way to, the, the, the bottom line is for these um, food preparations is right now, if we take things from a store, if we take it out of the ground, if we do lots of things, um, we are all of a sudden, okay, let's take a carrot. Okay. Even if we take a carrot out of the ground in our own garden, the soil probably isn't uh, 100%, especially in uh, commercially prepared carrots. If we take it out of the ground there, we lost nutrition, right? We put it in the fridge, nutrition starts to go down. If we cook it, then we lose a lot of enzymes, which are the super important things that we need. So we lose the enzymes. And then, um, you know, when we eat it, we eat a carrot. And a lot of it has been kind of compromised, changed. It's not the original carrot that, you know, uh, the divine blueprint of the carrot, right? But what I love about the bottom line about the traditional food preparations are when you do these preparation, it actually increases the nutrients. So those are the type of things that you learn in my nutritional energetics program. And actually, well, actually, I should say the culinary naturopathy. So I have two parts. There's two parts. Let's see if I can type this in while I'm saying it. So there's two parts to my programs. Um, there is the part of the culinary, what I call culinary naturopathy, which are the traditional food preparations, the real-time cooking, um, the... Yeah, cooking for, for matter, right? What you see in food, what you see, uh, you know, chopping things, cooking things, putting things together, which can include, include the super foods. So the two parts are the culinary nature, we call it culinary nature, blah, can't talk, I better type it. Culinary naturopathy. So that's all about learning uh, to use superfoods, natural foods, and the traditional foods preparations in the Weston Price information and research. It's actually research. It is really true scientific research. And Sally Fallon is actually um, uh, developing her own lab so she can continue with this re research. And hello to everybody, Cindy and Colleen and Nora and Gina. Hello, hello. Thank you for chiming in. Whoops, I spelled that wrong. It's supposed to be naturopathy type that wrong, <laughs> but it's culinary naturopathy. And then the second part is my nutritional energetics. If I can type right this time is my nutritional energetics part. And that's where we even take nutrition to this kind of level, right? With frequency, with intention, with, and this, if you don't know, is uh, that, um, that square looking thing in the picture is a terror resonator. And that uh, is actually, it can be used for intention. A lot of people use it for intention. And I, I have mine here. I use mine because this is really, truly an elemental balancer of food. If I put my coffee on this, it gets elementally balanced. I use the light score of food. So that really is the part that you learn in my nutritional energetics program. And you can do all sorts of crazy thing with frequency. Energy and frequency is what we're all about. And it's really all about learning how to deal with the frequency. And I'm going to put this up again for folks who have come in later. Let me put this other one up. Really, because it's not about diet, really. It is not about, people love to talk about food combining and, you know, a diet this and paleo this and, you know, vegetarian that. And I think it's really about frequency for your body. It's about um, making sure we can get the frequencies in both in physical matter, both in 3D and, and above, right, in frequency form. So we are getting to be such an amazing multidimensional body that we can do all this. And some people are aware and kind of getting aware and some aren't. What I also call the 1D kind of frequencies and nutrition are numbers. So here's the number for compassion. This is the frequency number, the blueprint frequency number for compassion. So if you take this number, you can say it seven times, which will um, bring it into your field. Um, and with the numbers, again, this isn't about numbers, and we've done a lot of shows about numbers um, so we can talk about how to infuse numbers. But uh, let's do this really simply. If you take that number, write it down on a piece of paper, tape it onto a bottle, 
like I did here. I have a bottle here. And you can see the numbers are on the inside. They're, they're on the inside, facing inside, so the water can literally read the number. Um, you can do that. And your, nut, your water will infuse with compassion. Um, I love this number, and it keeps coming up for me. And so I wanted to share that number as well, and especially the picture kind of relates to this time of year. So there is, nutrition can even relate to numbers. Um, I do the Lloyd Muir numbers a lot, and I do his assessment a lot. If you don't know about that, um, I'm going to uh, put links. I'm going to put the link to my website in here. I don't have all the pages fixed. I'm redoing a website. Um, I'm talking about this here, and if you're seeing this on the replay in uh, late 2018, but for I'll have a brand new website to all these different kind of links and how you can learn these things at Nourishing 9D, and again, I'm trying to type this in properly, Nourishing9D.com. And actually right now you can go there and get the sourdough challenge. You can do that. It's a free challenge. Um, every day you'll get an email for a week telling you how to um, make a sourdough, right? I hate the word. It's really, it's really superfood bread is what it is. It's superfood. And you can actually um, add it to chocolate cake. You can do amazing things with it. So again, I won't go into that one, but that is one of the traditional methods. And in episode one here, I'm trying to get an overview, but there's just so much that I'm trying to uh, bring in for you here. So if you have any questions, go ahead. If I don't catch them here, um, or if you wanna ask about traditional foods, since the theme is kind of traditional foods, um, we'll keep with that. Um, the general question, I guess, is how superfoods relates to uh, new age health. Is that one, these methods in the nutritional or the nourishing traditions book and the ones that I teach in my classes um, are the traditional methods, like I said, the 11 common denominators that, that help make us healthy now. These methods were developed when people didn't have refrigeration. So they had to culture things. They had to sprout things. Uh, they didn't prepare their grains without soaking, sprouting, and then sourdoughing. They just didn't. They didn't just grind a grain and put it into bread. And they didn't have a fast yeast. So these were methods that they didn't say, oh, yeah, I'm getting my probiotics and my gut health is good today. They did that to get through the winter. And in fact, I have what I, I also teach probi um, making your own probiotics and culturing. This is something called a perfect pickler. And um, in four days, you have cultured carrots, cultured, forget about the cabbage sauerkraut, if that's not what you like. You can do pretty much any vegetable in that perfect pickler. And that's what I teach in, my, in, the, in the one part called culinary naturopathy. Um, so these methods, again, were things that they just did to keep keep food through the winter to, um, you know, they had their sourdough to rise bread. Um, they, um, you know, used if they were uh, most of them were omnivores. In fact, Western Price tried to find a vegetarian population and never found one. Um, so they used all the animal. They revered the animal. They uh, used all the bones for beautiful stock. They used everything of the animal for, for um, you know, everything good. And the one thing that that is number 11 on the list, but I really love this because I remember getting pregnant and my mom was a wonderful mom in her in her own right. But um, as far as little kids, uh, she took care of my little kids really well. But when she had kids, she really didn't kind of... Um, know what she was doing. So when I got pregnant, I said, well, mom, what do I do now? And she's like, well, I don't know. So you get the books on, okay, what to eat when pregnant or what to do when pregnant, right? You got the books and all that kind of old information is lost. So what I love about number 11, and I'm going to read it in word for word, uh, traditional cultures make provisions for the health of future generations by providing special nutrient rich animal foods for parents to be pregnant women and growing children. And they did proper spacing of children um, and, and teaching the children right the correct principles of diet and food preparation, really. Now, you, of course, you can bring this, you know, it says animal foods in there. Um, so if you're vegetarian, that's OK. But uh, they really made the basic is they gave the best food to the people who were just getting married. They made sure the people in their community who are about ready to have children had the absolute best food available. And that's what we don't do. You know, we don't do it on purpose indirectly, but um, we don't care for our community like that. So I really love that number 11 principle there. 
Um, let me see if I'm getting any questions. I love sourdough. Yeah, sourdough has a terrible name, right? We've got to rename that superfood, super, super grain. I don't know. Because what super, um, since I saw somebody comment on sourdough, what sourdough does, it breaks down the grain. It actually breaks down the gluten and makes um, all that uh, wonderful nutrition in the actual grain bioavailable to you. So it's uh, really cool. It doesn't have to taste sour. It doesn't take a lot of time. You don't even have to. Um, and I'll put this up again on my website. You can actually do the sourdough challenge if you want to see how to create a wonderful, and it's bacteria, guys. It's bacteria breaking down everything. So if you want to make your own culture, you don't even have to buy it. In fact, if um, I live in the Adirondacks, even if I bought uh, San Francisco sourdough and brought it to the Adirondacks and bought it online or whatever, um, it would turn into Adirondack sourdough because it's the bacteria and magic floating around in the air here. So um, you can make your own. You don't have to spend uh, tons of money or, or you know, try and find a, a sourdough. So I mean, this is really a culture, a grain culture. I'm going to rename these things. <laughs> I hate that. Okay. Um, so uh, I'll go back to my cookbook. Because we, I wrote a, uh, we, my husband and I, don't say me, my husband and I wrote a cookbook and we were doing a history of the Adirondacks and our different recipes. So this has, what it, what I also included in this cookbook, and I think you can get it right off Nourishing 90. And let me give you our Lodge website as well. Because um, we do have a store from there as well. Let me write this in. Our Lodge is lodgeonlakeclear.com. I'm going to type that in, right? And that tells a little bit about the history of our area, but it also tells about mindful eating and traditional foods in a very introductory way. The nourishing traditions is extremely overwhelming unless you take it piece by piece. Um, I had to learn all those different descriptions, didn't even know the words. So this is a little bit of um, a history of my family and the lodge. It tells mindful eating and tips and tricks. And also beer and wine pairings as well. So it tells a little bit about that, and as long as the, uh, as well as the history of the Adirondacks and recipes, of course, uh, from my restaurant. They're pretty much all signature recipes, very different uh, European. I always call it European background with Adirondack local ingredients. Um, okay, let me see. So yeah, thanks for your hellos and comments, and thanks for logging on, guys, and sharing. Thank you so much for the sharing. Um, within our place here at the Lake Clear Lodge, we actually have a portal. Um, it's been shown and um, shown a lot of wonderful energy workers have uh, reiterated the fact to me that we have a portal right on our lake. So this is our beachfront here. In fact, that's my husband looking at because this uh, what uh, Peter Shank, who's on Kashuk Academy many times with myself and Christy, um, he called this the uh, Saint Germain because he was here at the at the lodge. And he called this a St. Germain. This went on for over an hour. And I don't know anybody else in my area who either, either saw this or mentioned it. And it was the most amazing thing that I've ever seen. And then it's happened a few years later, actually twice in one week that we caught it. We actually do on lodgeandlakeclear.com, the website that I have up. Um, it's winter right now, so <clears throat> our webcam glitches in and out. But if you go to that website, there's um, the video on top, but if you scroll down, you will get the live picture of basically that scene out to the lake and St. Regis Mountain. And I've found that where you see the um, where you see the beam coming out of the mountain, where it's reflecting right in the lake, probably center of the picture what I want to call from shore to the mountain, right in the center of the picture, that's where the portal is. And there was a wonderful activation actually by Peter Shank the other night. And I just saw the picture of this portal spinning and, and going up to, um, you know, up through the dimensions. It was really amazing. So if you ever want to look out onto an energetic portal, go to lodgeonlakeclear.com, scroll down, and we have a live webcam, especially at sunset, the most beautiful sunsets. Uh, you know, have a seat, watch the sunset, especially if you're in a city or somewhere where you don't see sunsets over the mountains, please log on and take a look at a sunset. It's really beautiful. Um, hi, is it, is it, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say it right. So hello, I'm going to put, put these up. So thanks guys. I'm going to say hello, place up some of the hellos. I appreciate you being here watching on. 
Yeah, Colleen loves sourdough. Yeah, it's very different. If you sourdough is a crazy thing. Um, you actually just treat it like a little baby in your kitchen and you feed it and you kind of let it go dormant. You don't have to do, you know, do things with it a lot of times. That's okay. So to reiterate our traditional foods for new age health, they're the principles and cooking methods by Weston A. Price, uh, brought back into kind of real time by Sally Fallon and the Nutri Nourishing Traditions Cookbook. That's Sally on the back. Um, we've had her here for a lecture. I'm actually a, a Weston A. Price chapter leader and have been for, I don't know, I think it's about 15 years. I don't know. I'm, I am a, um, a Weston Price chapter leader as well. I've become very versed in all that time in the nutritional uh, the nourishing traditions, what I call culinary naturopathy, right? For the physical body, food preparations that actually increase the nutrients of our food. And then I also do the nutritional energetics, which are things like, um, like infusing water, right? Infusing water and spraying it around. It's really awesome because sometimes I use the abundance spray in one of my bottles and I'll spray it around, like say the lobby um, and where people check out, I'll put abundance, I'll put calming, I'll put peace. Um, Cause we really do try and hold the space here at our lodge uh, for people who really need rejuvenation. Um, if you're a practitioner or anyone who likes to host retreats, then please contact me at lodgeandlakeclear.com. Uh, when I actually spray the abundance program, the water program, program in my spray bottle around the lobby. People might drop off a book for me or um, my, my, the staff will get extra tips. So it's really interesting. And again, that's another new, more obviously a new age um, area of infusing your water for health and healing and different intents along with the old world kind of traditional food methods that are really for physical, um, but are helping our bodies um, ascend really and grow into more of a light a light body because it's breaking down the food it's adding the enzymes so that we can digest it we all have a lot of digestive problems these days for a number of reasons um yep uh jan is saying she needs an alkaline and low oxalate diet so people are finding what they need for themselves these days in terms of a lot of the food that's been really processed and kind of manipulated a little bit <laughs> that again is another story right um, so stay healthy, stay nourished through the holidays and throughout 2019. Um, I hope to see you. This is episode one. I'm just trying to give a little bit of a background. I am going to be going through those 11 characteristics on different shows throughout 2019. So I hope to see you there. If anybody goes to the site and has a particular process that they want to know on the Akashic Academy show here that they want me to do first during second, if you have any um uh, you know, anybody wants to recommend anything that they want to learn first, go ahead and put it in the comments or send it to me from Nourishing 9D. I'll put up my website again. You can contact me there. 9D.com. And I do do, um, actually, uh, for those who don't know, I do do energetic activations. Um, I am an emotion code certified, so I know about the emotions. I do the numbers. We do number different things. We do light wave, light wave a lot. I absolutely love light wave. Um, definitely a new age uh, nutritional uh, modality as well, where I infuse different frequencies into your field and check that your multidimensional integration system, which is a tongue twister, is open and, and uh, available for those frequencies as well. So thanks so much for chiming on. Um, join me back in for the different preparation methods. And like I said, you can make uh, requests, no problem. I love to talk about this stuff, whether it is the nourishing principles of food preparation or nutritional energetics, which we're all um, becoming so aware that we need these days. So thank you so much for chiming on, everyone, and we'll see you next time.